Necrotic and sloughed off cecum. This is IC junction, and uh, there is part of ascending colon is also it is necrotic and sloughed off. This is on the first second. This is the second. ना ये तो पहले तो नहीं कि पीछे हैं तो ये जो हमारा चिकन जो है ना पुल्डा What's this? Orderly. Can I tell you? Lights are acting. Yeah. Can I tell you? Lights are acting. Okay. 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 Sabu, sabu ba? 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 Sabu, इसको पर हारने से हाँ मोने Yes, sir. And you open up the seat. Hold up. 
See, this is more, more importantly, it's a 70 year old gentleman with a, a patient presented with perforation peritonitis. So, first thing first, any patient with perforation peritonitis will have no choice but to go for surgery. So, you, you took it up for, thank you, you took it up for emergency laparotomy. Right. Now, emergency laparotomy is done with a mindset that you may require to do a stoma, so you need, must have a patient for that. All that routinely is done and a budget to scoring is also important. If you really look at your patient, the score was around 18 or 17. The patient was sick. Right? And 70 year old would mean you were always having a doubt. Maybe there was a malignancy also. Right? Yes. Things can happen. So what was in our mind? When we were opening up, we were plainly looking at a case of operation peritonitis as we would normally do. And then we found that there was a cecal blowout. That's what you all found? Yes, sir. Yes, and you called me. So cecal blowout or the cecal being so pliable would mean, first of all, you must exclude a left-sided malignancy. It's a mistake that a lot of people do. That there's a growth on the left side yes, and it is called the, uh, you know, closed loop, closed loop syndrome. And you have done what? You just handle this. This would be a mistake. That is number one. But in that case, you would find patient will be extremely sick and some past history would be there. But still keep that thing in your mind. Because you have to have a reason for sickle blowout. It can't just blow out. Okay. Like in this case, you found that iris sickle junction was a little higher than usual. So tuberculosis would come to your mind with a pulled up sickle, etc. Now when you are faced with this situation, the options are two or three. One is bail out. That is, if you cannot do a good dissection, of the, you know, it's all mucked up. So it's not like a routine right in the where planes are clear and you can actually do, you know, dissection uh, properly. So what are you worried about? That you may damage the ureter, you may damage the duodenum, you may damage the ileic vessels. So there's so many things you can damage. You know, thick and peritoneum. So the peritoneum and thick and all are mucked up together. So this decision is important. So if you do not have the technical skill, it is not at all a, a wrong approach to do a stoma and come out to live to fight another day as they say, right? You should live to fight another day. The other option is if you are a little equipped with a skill and if you can do a hepicolectomy, that would achieve a complete answer. I mean, you actually got rid of the disease and you are going to give a patient a better outcome. But after that, the third part, whether you anastomose or you don't, so that obviously we follow the policy of Apache to scoring. If the score is less than 10, we only, only then we do anastomosis. In this case, it was 18, which, which would mean the patient was not too well, right? So what did we want to do? We wanted to get rid of the disease and at the same time, we wanted to help the patient survive this problem. And then we can go for a definitive treatment. So we went for the right hemicolectomy with a stone, that is ileostomy. Now there is a segment which is distal and at the same time, we felt for any growth on the left side. A DRE should be done, it can be done on the table itself to look for any growth on the left side. Is that okay? And the rest is of course, we won't close the skin because of the contamination that we have inside. So, sheep can be closed. So, the structures that you need to look for carefully uh, when you're doing the right way collectively, of course, the classical way is that you're going along the line of toe, you open up the vascular plane, keep lifting it up medially. Easier said than done in such a case, but generally speaking. So as you keep going medially, try to keep the dissection sharp rather than blunt and locate the uh, ureter and that the policy that I follow is, uh, you know, Karan was asking me during the surgery, sir, what about this sigmoid recess, etc. What we for, that's on the left side, right side, you don't have sigmoid. So you're lifting it up and you locate the ileic vessels. It will invariably be lying at the bifurcation. That's one anatomy which it never changes. You can trace it out. Otherwise, suspect every tubular structure to be ureter unless proven otherwise. You don't just like it unless you dissect it. Okay. And what did we do? You must have realized that posterior plane was all, you people had done some bit of dissection initially before I came. So we, I went medially because that's a cleaner feed. So getting the ileopolic vessel which we ligated and then you, when the mesentery opens up, you get an approach from both the sides. So then it becomes easier. So we did that and you know, mobilizing it from the, you know, you saw that gerota's fascia was getting exposed and fat 
perirenal fat was there, which you need to preserve in this case, unless you're going for a definitive surgery for malignancy. And if you stay in that plane, don't go too far immediately, you won't damage the duodenum also. Did you understand? Yes, sir. So that's what we did. And hopefully, based on the histopathology, we opened up the specimen. It, it is a doubtful area, but with a lot of so much of fluffing out of the cecum that you can't be very sure of the pathology. So let's wait for the pathology and accordingly definitive treatment can then be offered. But don't forget to examine the left side in such cases. That's what I wanted to be a take home. And we took how much of the ileum? About 15 centimeters, 10 to 15 centimeters. That's the maximum. That's the plane where ileum, ileocolic, ileal and colic, the sequel branch there, you know, that avascular window. That's where we, we, we did the stapler fire here, but here we did a manual one. And then we are closing it in two days. Sir, if there is a growth on the left side, then mucus fistula is mandatory, otherwise we can just close the stump and take the ileus to be. That's a very good question. If there is actually, I was telling you, find out if there is a growth on the left side. So growth on the left side would mean that pathology is not on the right side. Although you think you have removed the pathology, but pathology is there. Sometimes we just close the, uh, yes, yes, the yes, stump. Correct, correct point. So, we once again follow the policy of living to fight it another day. What about? You know, the blowout again happening because you've got an obstruction distally. See, left side, as Dr. Rishi was saying, left side, if there's a growth, it could be blocking it. So, if you close it here again, it may happen. So, then you need to make a mucus fistula so that you don't have a blowout again. It won't be cecum. Why does the blowout happen, Rishi? So, the closed loop. If you close it in, then ICJ is iliocolic junction is one wheel valve. So, when we close the uh, uh, loop, it, the so it becomes a blind loop, loop, blind loop. On which, both sides which, 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 uh, which physics, law of physics applies in Laplace's law. Laplace. Not Pascal's law, which is equal distribution. Laplace's law would be equal pressure on the, you know, the cecum tends to distend. And as it keeps on distending, the blood supply keeps on reducing. Yes, and finally, it will give way. There's an editorial of mine, uh, which I published, I think, eight, ten years ago. Physics for surgeons. Physics for surgeons is where we have discussed why does the blowout happen. There is a, you know, the reduced blood supply based on the dislocation. Any other point sir, there? And one more thing, sir. Uh, in, especially while you are handling the inf uh, inflammation in any bowel pathology, the hollow structure is always uh, trying to be on the side of inflammation. In this case, we find the ureter is very close to sick especially without inflammation we will find all structure like in this uh, the what, what Dr. Rishi is saying is in a in notorious a, thing trying to attract uh, <laughs> <laughs> inflammatory pathologies usually have uh, you know they deliberately make the anatomy so difficult for the surgeon it's a challenge it is good to believe that way and uh, therefore if you are in doubt I'm repeating it and if you're not an experienced surgeon it is safer unlike in malignancy where you go for the pedicle it's safer to stay along the wall so that you are at least able to, uh, you know, avoid any added problem because you don't want to add problems, you know. You may solve some problem, but you don't want to add a, a lot of problems, you know. So don't make it more difficult. So don't make the treatment worse than the disease. What we call as primum non no share is basically making the, the surgery safer for the patient. You should not get a pathology or a problem. Do you understand? Yes, sir. So, that's a very valid point. And often we find that all the hollow structures tend to get close to where the inflammation is and we struggle. The most important structures to protect therefore are ureter, duodenum, gonadal vessels and vas also if the patient is young. But that is much lower down. See what happened? In this case, everything got stuck to inflamed hollow organ. That's the point he was trying to make. And don't go too far behind also, which also is a problem. When you're not in the right plane, you go so far behind that you start eroding into the retroperitoneal muscles. And then it bleeds and that can be a challenge. Whenever you are in doubt, I have a, I mean a take home for that, I mean a rule of thumb. Go feel the aorta, trace it down, you can feel the common eye, they can trace it down, you will get the idea of where you are. 
like in thyroid surgery whenever in doubt go behind lower down and come up here go medially and then you can come back any emergency surgery sir for a senior resident like and post graduate they have tendency to do the blunt dissection more often compared to the soft dissection and especially in inflammation at the same time you will take that ureter towards the cecum so handling cecum sharp dissection is mandatory and uh, what we often discuss uh, is that using warm saline to separate adhesions is a good idea and use sharp scissors don't use diathermy energy sources are not very help very good in inflammation because of water and yeah because of uh, water and conduction and you don't know the extent of cutting that you're doing or damage you're doing use sharp dissection with scissors tissue edema is also one of the factor tissue edema is a double edged sword sometimes it helps because it creates those planes you can separate those planes but diathermy is not good but diathermy yeah. is not a good idea so use sharp dissection which we which which we are trying to say is medzen bomb or any steel scissors for dissection and sir what is the role of a cecostomy tube cecostomy especially if the good apache question. is very poor good question very good and no malignancy this is our unit policy what dr rishi is saying is been our trainees with the registrar now with the faculty the same you know so we've been i've been able to watch it see the problem is if you're doing an ileostomy alone and cecum is not uh, like this it is a sloughed out cecum see cecum is intact but it's got a bad wall if some part is some part is sloughed out so can you repair it and do a stoma but if the ileostomy wall is competent again this would give way so we follow the policy of taking the appendix out and putting the tube cecostomy there do not put a tube cecostomy through the patch which was gangrenous but that you freshened it and you put it that is going to give way the gangrenous patch you excised you repair it like you do but use a fresh hole for cecostomy now does cecostomy really divert so well it's a very controversial thing many people don't agree but the best thing that it does is the gas doesn't it most importantly it's not the fecal content which causes cecal blow it's the gas it is the gas 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 so cecostomy is a good idea i have a doubt sir so you were saying in a gangrenous bout can part, you louder in a gangrenous part you not even if you freshen the margins and you put a tube cecostomy it's going to give away it's going to fail so my question is sir when the base of the appendix is sloughed off uh we no base of the appendix if it is sloughed out it's as bad as doing it through the cecostomy uh, the the sloughed out part i'm talking about a normal appendix this this patient doesn't have appendicitis no yes sir so the cecal wall ba- at the base of appendix would be thick yes sir and normal what i'm trying to say is take home is if you don't shake it the take home is do not use the perforation as a At a means of putting in a tube and draining it out. That's what I'm trying to say because it's not going to be holding on, even if you freshen it. It can be done if you don't have any other option. But since you have a, you know, you can remove appendix and there is a hole there which is freshened, you can put in a cecostomy. So it means situation is like the same in trauma surgery while you are doing the damage control surgery. Similarly, if Apache is poor, patient is. not in good state so better to do the just like a damage control surgery minimum dissection they allow so that they so living to fight another day is the policy do not do everything on that day you know a living problem is better than a dead solution yes sir i right? these are some one liners which i always pass on to my residents and trainees yes sir a living problem you can still fix it no when you are in a better situation patient is in a better situation and the theater conditions are all organized you've taken care of his sepsis he is settled so that's the right time to be doing a definitive work in an emergency theater if you try to do too much you get too little out of it but if you do little you may get a lot out of it so less is more in this situation what is the take home the less is more no. so here if he lives to fight another day you also live to fight another day yes sir okay yes sir so um, 
we would be keeping our fingers crossed in as far as the histopathology is concerned and after that we take a call. Yes. I hope that's clear. Yes, yes sir. Okay. Sir, like this patient uh, is an elderly gentleman, 73 years old and uh, if this was a malignant malignancy of the cecum, then uh, how would we have approached in the emergency? We covered it partly. Uh, that whenever there is a cecal blowout, always think of a left-sided malignancy which we should always explore, right? And when we found that there is no malignancy, then is it a malignancy of the cecum or not that you would try to feel and try to appreciate and understand? In the cecal malignancy, and if you have the expertise, it would still be a, a good idea to go for a proper right hemicolectomy with good clearance of the lymph nodes. So what would that mean? We can mobilize exactly the same way, making sure that we take care of the pedicles, that is ilocolic, right colic, and middle colic, right branch, and do as we can mentioning do a clearance, which would mean getting all the lymph nodes, lymphatics with the specimen. But the question is again the same. Is the patient fit enough or is the surgeon fit enough to be able to do it? The performance status of the patient as well as of the surgeon. Both are important in planning this kind of a treatment. You getting what I'm saying? Yes, sir. Now suppose I'm, I'm extending the question. Suppose there was a liver metastasis also in the patient. Would my Extent of resection change? Extent of resection won't change because in colorectal malignancy the best palliation is resection only. Surgery is the best palliation. But I would not be touching the you know the liver metastasis. And maybe if the score is good, I can do the aristosis that is allo transverse. Otherwise, I'll bring in a bring out a stone. A worse comes to worse. If you're not trained, you're not equipped. I've already talked about the left-sided growth producing the blowout. If there is a right-sided growth with the blowout, and clearly it's proximal to the obstruction, or the disease itself has gone through the wall, or there is an obstruction proximal to it, as you were mentioning, and it is given away. In that case, resection and a stoma is a better option. Sir, so, how it affects the prognosis if there is a sickle malignancy, according to Socrates, he was asking, uh, if there is a sickle malignancy and there is a blowout in emergency, it means there is a serosal breach. And it's already, yeah, it's already uh, T4 yes. and with its rupture into the yes, peritoneal cavity, it is becoming a metastatic disease. Yes. So, so debulking versus uh, complete, what? Uh, see, the so term debulking yes. I don't use yes. because debulking sounds very crude. Yes. Half it is that it's a, uh, yeah, yes. it, it, no, no, debulking term per se, no. yes. it has now been replaced by cytoreductive surgery, wherever the, the term was used, but I get what you're saying. Would you would it would you be satisfied in doing a less than optimal resection? See, the the palliative resection also should be R zero. So you should get a clearance. Yes, sir. If if I am not able to get the that mass, so better to do the ileostomy and in stoma the and, and do second stage uh, surgery with planning I, after chemo. Uh, or 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 after put, discuss in the MDT, take a decision on whether you can put the patient on chemotherapy up front and then go for surgery. But let me tell you one thing, the practical situation. The practical scenario is if it is perforated, we are already dealing with a very late disease. Almost invariably you will find this patient would have either liver metastasis or metastasis elsewhere. So we all know that one circumference takes about six months so it's two years old when it's in all, all of it. And if it has gone through the wall, it's already a metastatic disease. So we are looking at a metastatic disease. When you say metastatic disease in colorectal cancer, we have M1, A and B, no? So A is when one organ, B is when more than one, etc. But if it is peritoneum, you are already talking about a, you know, salvage that you want to do. So using your, uh, I mean, question to explain a point, I would like to get the clearance of the disease to the extent possible, so I get a clearance of T, but I won't bother too much about the N unless I can do it safely without delaying the surgery too much. Because surgery is still the best option. It is the best uh, palliation. And suppose you 
you don't you you're not able to even resect this which is what you're saying that i'm not able to get it clear i'm not able to get an r0 it's better to do an ios to me go for a systemic therapy and then come back and so especially uh, one cases where you find the coexisting co mm -hmm. or tuberculosis along with the medicines so ca colon so in this case there is a risk of a uh, chikal blow rupture is common compared to normal uh, Or See, coexistence of tuberculosis has been uh, seen many times, especially in this part of the world. We have reported it also. So, the treatment does not change. In fact, for tuberculosis also, allosical tuberculosis, right of a colectomy is planned. Right of a colectomy, but it's a conservative one. We do not go beyond the left branch of the, you know, the middle colon. But if you are treating it for malignant tuberculosis, gets treated after. Suppose I am treating for the. Uh, टिबोकुलोसिसमेंटली would you go back in again to do surgery or not that answer is no we'll manage it with systemic therapy because you know there is a morbidity of second surgery but even for tuberculosis we try to get optimal clearance no we are not leaving the disease behind but in tuberculosis if you know beforehand and malignancy is a surprise operative surprise or histological surprise then i don't think you would be too much worried because oh sorry malignancy was it was treated as malignancy but it came out as tuberculosis which was also a surprise it doesn't bother you much but the other way around is a little bit of a problem then you will actually check whether the margin is clear or not how many nodes were taken out how many are optimal nodes uh, so 12 12 nodes so if you got the clearance all right if you are optimally treated then there is no problem. So God forbid, and if we had uh, the injury to ureter, in uh, if it happens, then what do we do? Ureter injury can, in this case, is usually not a hole. It's a segment lost. If you lose a segment of ureter, what's it? Just a cutting of ureter. There are two things. Are you following what I'm saying? Yes, sir. Now end-to-end -end repair is possible with a DJ stent in place. How do you introduce a DJ stent to the child? So, getting a help of a you know sister scope to introduce it is, a, is one idea. Otherwise, it may be a challenge to introduce the DJ stent, right? If it is a segment lost, then you have to mobilize the ureter from both the sides and see if the segment loss is less than about a centimeter. You can still manage it. If it is more than that, that is you've been totally reckless and you've gone the you know absolutely reserved. If you take out a bigger segment, then you can use what is called a Bowari flap, uh, which can be lifted up from the bladder. It's a specialized work. But if you don't know anything, that you you know you cannot cannot manage it. The safer option is put in a, a feeding tube into the proximal ureter and bring it out as a ureterostomy, so that at a second stage you can do a proper repair rather than messing around. I mean, don't. Some people have seen they will ligate both the ends and leave it there. It's not a great option because that produces morbidity and problems. So one is, I mean, if you watch uh, my BSS videos of the past, I have taught this ureteral repair using the Bowari flap. Bowari flap is not very difficult to do. All surgeons should learn. It is not about getting a urologist in each time. But if you wanted me to answer the the, the you know the most sophisticated way and a theoretical answer is get a urologist to fix it. But you should know how to do it. Can you use um, something else to cover it up? Some people have used appendix as a segment. The depression on both the side, get to it. No, uh, pedicle appendix yes to connect both the ends. That's an option. But I think suppose somebody was operating, it should come out as you would. Uh, you know, you try to do end to end if it is possible, and it is possible. You can mobilize a lot. You know. Kidney can't come down, but uh, the lower part can be pulled. Other option is the retro-retrostomy, but 
it is done by the urologist. No, again, okay. then you have to find, doing the then you are finding the other urethra, it will take a little yes. time. It will but in the emergency, problem. better to do the stoma. I mean, you can do a urethrostomy. So it, it's, it's accepted, no problem. In emergency, especially. Thank you, sir. Whenever in doubt, take it out. That's a principle you should follow. Whenever in doubt, take it, take out. it out. Whether it's bowel, I will have a ureter or whatever. When you are in doubt, bring it out so that you can deal with it later. Okay? Right, sir. Thank you, sir.